Today we are going to learn about the host parasite interaction, recognition and the entry process of different pathogens like bacteria, viruses into animal and plant host cells, alteration of host cell behavior by pathogens, virus induced cell transformation, pathogen induced diseases in animals and plants, cell cell fusion in both normal and abnormal cells. All these topics just in one video, uh, very basic idea about all these topics. So host pathogen interactions are dynamic relationships between an invading pathogen and its host. The pathogen tries to establish itself within a host cells and tissues while the host tries to defend against the pathogen. The recognition and entry process of different pathogens like bacteria, virus into animal and plant host cells, alteration of host cell behavior by pathogens and all these topics we are going to learn one by one. So first, bacterial pathogens. Bacteria are a variety of bacteria use a variety of mechanisms to recognize and enter host cells. Some bacteria produce virulence factors such as adhesions, adhesions, which allow them to adhere to host cell surfaces. Once attached, the bacteria can then use other virulence factors such as invasions to penetrate the host cell membrane. Bacterial toxins can also damage host cell da membranes and cause tissue damage. Next, viral pathogens. Viruses are obligate intracellular parasites that require host cells to replicate. The viral life cycle involves a series of steps including recognition and attachment to host cells, entry, replication, assembly and release. The mechanism of recognition and entry varies dependently depending on the type of virus. For example, some viruses enter host cells by binding to specific receptor, pro receptor proteins on the cell surface, while others can enter by direct fusion with the cell membrane. Then alteration of host cell behavior by pathogens. Once inside the host cell, pathogens can manipulate host cell behavior to their advantage. This can involve altering host cell signaling pathways, disrupting normal cell functions, or inducing the production of cytokines and other inflammatory mediators. Alteration of host cell behavior by pathogens. So once inside the host cell, pathogens can manipulate host cell behavior to their advantage. This can involve altering host cell signaling pathways, disrupting normal cell functions or in inducing the production of cytokines and other inflammatory mediators. Bacterial pathogens can also form. This can involve altering host cell signaling pathways, disrupting normal cell functions, or including the production of inducing the production of cytokines and other inflammatory mediators. Bacterial pathogens can also form biofilms, which are communities of bacteria that can adhere to surfaces and resist host immune defenses. Then virus-induced cell transformation. Some viruses have the ability to transform host cells, causing them to become cancerous. For example, the human papilloma virus, HPV, can cause cervical cancer, while the Epstein-Barr virus is associated with Brickett's lymphoma and other types of cancer. The mechanism of virus-induced cell transformation is not fully understood, but it is thought to involve the activation of oncogenes oncogenes of the or the inactivation of tumor suppressor genes. Then pathogen induced diseases in animals and plants. Pathogens can cause a wide range of diseases in animals and plants from mild infections to severe illness and death. The severity of the disease depends on the virulence of the pathogen and the host's immune response. Some bacterial pathogens can cause disease such as pneumonia, meningitis and sepsis. While viral pathogens can cause diseases such as influenza, HIV or AIDS and COVID-19. Cell cell fusion in normal and abnormal cells. Cell cell fusion is the process by which two or more cells fuse together to form a single cell. This process is critical for the development of multicellular organisms and is also involved in several pathological conditions such as cancer and viral infections. For example, some viruses can fuse host cells together to form multinucleated giant cells which are commonly found in viral infections such as measles and herpes simplex virus. 
In conclusion, the recognition and entry process of different pathogens like bacteria, viruses into animal and plant host cells, alteration of host cell behavior by pathogens, virus-induced cell transformation, pathogen-induced diseases in animals and plants. All this process involves a range of molecular and cellular mechanisms. Understanding this process is critical for the development of new strategies to prevent and treat infectious diseases. Then, cell signaling hormones. Cell signaling refers to the process by which cells communicate with each other to coordinate their activities and responses to various internal and external stimuli. This communication is crucial for the regulation of various cellular processes such as growth, differentiation, metabolism and survival. Then hormones and their receptors. Hormones are signaling molecules that are secreted by glands into the bloodstream and carried to target cells where they bind to specific receptors. Hormones can be classified as either hydrophobic or hydrophilic depending on their solubility properties. Then hydrophobic hormones such as steroid hormones diffuse through the plasma membrane and bind to intracellular receptors while hydrophilic hormones such as peptide hormones bind to cell surface receptors. Then cell surface receptors are proteins that are located on the plasma membrane of cells and bind to specific signaling molecules such as hormones or neurotransmitters. There are three main types of cell surface receptors, iron channel linked receptors, G protein coupled receptors and enzyme linked receptors. So signaling through G protein coupled receptor, GPCRs are a large family of cell surface receptors that are involved in a wide variety of signaling pathways. Upon binding to the ligands, the GPCRs activate heterotrimeric G proteins which then activate downstream effector proteins such as enzymes or ion channels leading to the generation of second messengers. Then signal transduction pathways. Signal transduction pathways are a series of biochemical reactions that are initiated by binding of a signaling molecule to its receptor and ultimately lead to a cellular response. These pathways involve the activation of various protein kinases phosphatases and second messengers such as cyclic AMP and calcium ions. Then second messengers are small diffusible molecules that are generated in response to the activation of cell surface receptors and are involved in the transduction of signals across the plasma membrane. Examples of second messengers include CAMP, CA2+, and inositol triphosphate or IP3. Regulation of signaling pathways. Signaling pathways are regulated by various mechanisms such as feedback inhibition, receptor desensitization and crosstalk between different pathways. Dysregulation of signaling pathways can lead to various diseases such as cancer and metabolic disorders. Bacteria and plant two component systems. Bacteria and plants have evolved specialized signaling systems known as two component systems to respond to various environmental cues. These systems consist of a membrane bound histidine kinase which senses the extracellular signal and a cytoplasmic response regulator which mediates the cellular response. Then light signaling in plants. Light is a crucial environment cue for plants and they have evolved specialized photoreceptors to sense and respond to different wavelengths of light. Examples of photoreceptors in plants include phytochromes, cryptochromes and phototropins. Then bacterial chemotaxis and quorum sensing. Bacteria use chemotaxis to move toward or away from specific chemicals in their environment. Quorum sensing is a mechanism by which bacteria communicate with each other and coordinate their behavior in response to changes in population density. In summary, cell signaling is a complex process that involves a variety of signaling molecules, receptors and pathways which allow cells to communicate with each other and to respond to various internal and external stimuli. Understanding the mechanisms of cell signaling is crucial for the development of novel therapeutics for various diseases and for the engineering of biological systems with specific functions. Next, cellular communication, regulation of hematopoiesis and all those related topics. Regulation of hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis is the process of blood cell formation which occurs in the bone marrow. It is regulated by a complex interplay of cytokines, growth factors and transcription factors. Hematopoietic stem cells differentiate into various blood cell types such as erythrocytes, leukocytes and platelets depending on the signals they receive from the microenvironment. General principles of cell communication include 
the transmission of signals between cells to various signaling molecules such as hormones, growth factors and neurotransmitters. The basic principles of cell communication include signal generation, reception, transduction and response. Cell adhesion and roles of different adhesion molecules. Cell adhesion is crucial for the development and maintenance of tissues and organs. It involves the interaction between cells and extracellular matrix components as well as between cells themselves. Various adhesion molecules such as catherins, integrins, selectins and immunoglobulin superfamily members play important roles in cell adhesion, migration and signaling. Then gap junctions. Gap junctions are specialized intracellular channels that allow direct communication between adjacent cells. They are composed of connexin proteins that form hemi channels on the plasma membrane which can talk with hemi can. So hematopoiesis is the process of blood cell formation which occurs in the bone marrow. It is regulated by a complex interplay of cytokines, growth factors and transcription factors, hematopoietic stem cells or HSCs differentiate into various blood cell types such as erythrocytes, leukocytes and platelets depending on the signals they receive from the microenvironment. Then we have learnt all this. And after that, let's learn about the gap junctions once again. Gap junctions are specialized intercellular channels that allow direct communication between adjacent cells. They are composed of connexin proteins that form hemi channels on the plasma membrane, which can dock with hemi channels or neighboring cells to form a continuous channel. Gap junctions facilitate the exchange of small molecules and ions between cells allowing for coordinated cellular responses, extracellular matrix and integrins. The extracellular matrix or ECM is a complex network of proteins and carbohydrates that surrounds cells and provides structural support. Integrins are transmembrane receptors that interact with ECM and mediate cell adhesion, migration and signaling. They are involved in various physiological and pathological processes such as wound healing and due angiogenesis and cancer metastasis. Then neurotransmission and its regulation. Neurotransmission is the process by which nerve signals communicate with each other or with other types of cells such as muscle or gland cells. It involves the release of neurotransmitters from the presynaptic neuron which binds to specific receptors on the postsynaptic neuron or cell. Then neurotransmission is regulated by various mechanisms such as synaptic plasticity, receptor desensitization and neurotransmitter reuptake. Dysfunction in neurotransmission can lead to various neurological disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease and schizophrenia. Then cancer. In detail, cancer is a group of diseases characterized by uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells that can invade and destroy healthy tissues in the body. Cancer is a complex disease that can arise from genetic, environmental and lifestyle factors. In this essay, we will discuss the genetic basis of cancer, its link to life cycle and I'm sorry, cell cycle and role of oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes and various therapeutic interventions. So genetic rearrangements in progenitor cells are believed to be the initiating effect that leads to the development of cancer. Mutations or change in the DNA sequence of certain genes can lead to the activation of oncogenes, which promote the cell proliferation and inhibit cell death. On the other hand, mutations in tumor suppressor genes can impair their function, leading to uncontrolled cell growth and tumor formation. Cancer and the cell cycle are intricately linked. The cell cycle is a highly regulated process that controls cell growth and division. Cell prog progress through the cell cycle in a coordinated manner which, with checkpoints that ensure that each step is completed correctly before proceeding to the next. Mutations in genes that regulate the cell cycle can cause cells to bypass the checkpoints and divide uncontrollably. Then virus induced cancer is another important mechanism by which cancer can develop. Some viruses have the ability to integrate their genetic material into the host cell's DNA causing mutations in the host cell gene. That can lead to the development of cancer. For example, the human papilloma virus is known to cause cervical cancer. Metastasis is a hallmark of cancer and refers to the ability of cancer cells to invade neighboring tissues and spread to other parts of the body through the bloodstream or lymphatic system. Metastasis is a complex process that involves changes in cell adhesion, migration and invasion. Interactions between cancer cells and normal cells in the tumor microenvironment also play a critical role in metastasis. Then apoptosis.
I'm sorry, apoptosis or programmed cell death is a mutual process, natural process that help maintain tissues. Homeostasis, tissue homeostasis by eliminating damaged or unwanted cells. Cancer cells often have defects in their apoptotic pathways, allowing them to evade cell death and survive and proliferate. Therapeutic interventions for cancer often aim to induce apoptosis and cancer cells selectively. Various therapeutic interventions are available for cancer including surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy and immunotherapy. Surgery is often used to remove cancerous tissues while chemotherapy and radiation therapy aim to kill cancer cells by targeting their ability to divide and grow. Immunotherapy is a newer approach that harnesses the power of an immune system to recognize and eliminate cancer cells. So in conclusion, cancer is a complex disease that arises from genetic, environmental and lifestyle factors. The genetic basis of cancer involves mutations in genes that regulate cell growth and division, leading to uncontrolled cell proliferation and tumor formation. Therapeutic interventions for cancer aim to selectively target and eliminate cancer cells while suppressing healthy cells. Innate and adaptive immune system cells and molecules involved in innate and immune mechanism, adaptive immunity, antigens, all those topics. Then let's learn about them. The immune system is an intricate network of cells, tissues and organs that defends the body against pathogens such as bacteria, viruses and fungi as well as abnormal cells such as cancer cells. The immune system can be broadly divided into two categories, innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is the first line of references against infections and is present in all animals. It includes physical barriers such as the skin and mucous membranes, as well as a variety of cells such as macrophages, neutrophils and natural killer cells. These cells can recognize and eliminate pathogens by various mechanisms including phagocytosis and the release of antimicrobial molecules. Adaptive immunity on the other hand is specific to each pathogen and develops after exposure to the pathogen. It involves the production of antibodies by B cells and the activation of T cells which can recognize and eliminate infected cells. The adaptive immune response is highly specific and can generate immunological memory which provides protection against future infections. Antigens are substances that can be recognized by the immune system and can elicit an immune response. Antigens can be proteins, carbohydrates, lipids or nucleic acids and they are usually derived from pathogens or abnormal cells. Antigens can be either immunogenic meaning they can elicit an immune response or non-immunogenic meaning they cannot. B and T cells recognize specific regions of antigens called epitopes. B cells recognize epitopes on the surface of the antigens, while T cells recognize epitopes that are presented on the surface of infected cells. The binding of B or T cells to their respective epitopes trigger the activation of the immune response. Antibodies are Y-shaped proteins that are produced by B cells and can bind to specific antigens. Antibodies have two identical antigen binding sites which allow them to bind to two epitopes simultaneously. This binding can neutralize pathogens by preventing them from infecting cells or it can activate other immune cells to eliminate the pathogen. The diversity of antibodies is generated through a process called somatic recombination which occurs during the development of B cells. During this process, different gene segments are rearranged to create a unique antigen binding site for each B cell. This process can generate millions of different antibodies allowing the immune system to recognize and respond to a wide range of pathogens. Monoclonal antibodies and antibodies that are monoclonal antibodies are antibodies that are produced by a single B cell clone and are therefore identical in structure and specificity. Monoclonal antibodies can be used for various diagnostic purposes including the treatment of cancer and autoimmune diseases. Antigen antibody interactions are critical for the immune response. The binding of antibodies to antigens can trigger the activation of complement, a group of proteins that can eliminate pathogens by various mechanisms including the formation of porins in the pathogen's membrane. The binding of antibodies to antigens can also facilitate the recognition and elimination of pathogens by phagocytic cells such as macrophages. In conclusion, the innate and adaptive immune systems play crucial roles in protecting the body against pathogens and abnormal cells. The recognition of antigens by B and T cells, the production of antibodies and the interaction between antigens and an antibodies are all critical components of the immune system. Next, 
MHC molecules. So major histocompatibility complex MHC molecules are a group of genes that encode cell surface proteins that are responsible for presenting antigenic peptides to T cells. MHC molecules are found on nearly all nucleated cells of the body and they play a crucial role in the adaptive immune response. There are two classes of MHC molecules, MHC class 1 and MHC class 2 and they differ in their expression patterns and antigen presentation functions. Antigen processing and presentation. Antigen processing is the process by which antigens are broken down into smaller peptides and can be represented by MHC molecules, T cells. This process occurs in antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cell, macrophages and B cells. Once antigenic particles processed, they are presented to T cells in the context of MHC molecule. MHC class 1 molecules present peptides derived from endogenous antigens while MHC class 2 molecules present peptides derived from exogenous antigens. Then activation and differentiation of B and T cells. B cells and T cells are two types of lymphocytes that play a critical role in the adaptive immune response. B cells are responsible for producing antibodies while T cells are responsible for directly attacking infected cells. B cells are activated when they encounter an antigen that matches their B cell receptor, while T cells are activated when they encounter with an antigen presented on an EPC in the context of an MHC molecule. Once activated, P and T cells undergo clonal expansion and differentiation into effector cells that are capable of mounting an immune response against the antigen. B and T cell receptors are the antigenic receptors on the surface of P and T cells respectively. B cell receptors are composed of membrane-bound immunoglobulin molecules while T-cell receptors are composed of alpha and beta genes. P and T-cell receptors are specific for particular antigens and their binding to the antigen triggers the activation of the B or T-cell. Humoral and cell-mediated immune responses The humoral immune response is mediated by B-cells and is characterized by production of antibodies that can recognize and neutralize antigens. The cell-mediated immune response is mediated by T-cells and is characterized by a direct killing of infected cells and the release of cytokines and that, that activate other immune cells. Then primary and secondary immune modulation. The primary immune modulation of the primary immune response occurs when an antigen is encountered for the first time and it is characterized by the clonal expansion and differentiation of B and T-cells into the effector cells. The secondary immune response occurs when the same antigen is encountered again and it is characterized by a more rapid and robust response due to the presence of memory, T and B cells. The complement system is a group of proteins that work together to facilitate the immune response. The complement system can be activated by three different pathways, the classical pathway, the alternative pathway and the lectin pathway. Once activated, the complement system can result in a lysis of pathogens and opsonization of the pathogens and the recruitment of immune cells to the site of infection. Toll-like receptors. Toll-like receptors are a group of proteins that are involved in the recognition of pathogens. Toll-like receptors are found on the surface of immune cells such as dendritic cells and macrophages and they are responsible for recognizing conserved patterns in pathogens called pathogen-associated molecular patterns or PAMPS. P-A-M-P-S. Once TLRs recognize PAMPs. They trigger the activation of immune cells and the production of cytokines. Then cell-mediated effector functions. Cell-mediated effector functions refer to the mechanisms used by immune cells, particularly T cells, to eliminate pathogens and infected cells. These functions include cytotoxicity, cytokine production and activation of other immune cells. Inflammation is a response of the immune system to injury or infection and involves the recruitment of immune cells to the affected site. Hypersensitivity refers to an exaggerated immune response to an innocuous stimulus leading to tissue damage. Autoimmunity is the immune system's attack on the body's own tissues. During bacterial infections such as tuberculosis, the immune response involves the activation of both innate and adaptive immune responses. Macrophages recognize the phagocytos and the bacteria. Macrophages recognize and phagocytos the bacteria and dendritic cells activate T cells. The activation of T cells lead to the recruitment of other immune cells such as neutrophils and natural killer cells to the site of infection. In parasitic infections such as malaria, the immune response involves the activation of both the innate and adaptive immune response. The innate 
immune responses include the recognition of the parasite by tool like receptors and the activation of macrophages and dendritic cells the adaptive immune responses involve the activation of t and b cells which produce cytokines and antibodies to eliminate the parasite during viral functions such as hiv viral infections such as hiv the immune response involves the activation of both innate and adaptive immune responses the innate immune response includes recognition of virus by tool like receptors and the activation of macrophages and natural killer cells the adaptive immune response involves the activation of t and b cells which produce cytokines and antibodies to eliminate the virus however hiv can evade the immune system and persist in the body leading to immunodeficiency then congenital and acquired immunodeficiencies refer to conditions where the immune system is impaired and unable to mount on effective response to pathogens examples include severe combined immunodeficiency or skid disease and then acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or aids and autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis vaccines are biological preparations that stimulate the immune system to produce immunity to a specific pathogen vaccines contain antigens that resemble those of pathogen and stimulate the production of antibodies and memory t cells this leads to long lasting immunity to the pathogen without causing disease vaccines have been developed for many infectious diseases including measles polio and hepatitis b they have been instrumental in reducing the incidences and severity of infectious diseases globally next is a topic developmental biology basic concepts of development potency commitment specification and induction competence determination and differentiation morphogenetic gradients cell fate and cell lineages and all those related topics so developmental biology is the study of the processes by which multicellular organisms grow and develop from a single cell to a complex organism here are some of the basic concepts of development potency the ability of a cell to differentiate into different cell types then commitment a cells a cell is committed to a specific fate when it has irreversibly chosen a particular developmental pathway then specification the process by which a cell acquires a particular fate then induction a process by which one group of cells signals to another group of cells to influence their fate influence their fate induction the process by which one group of cells signals to another group of cells to influence their fate then competence the ability of a cell to respond to an inducing signal then determination the point at which a cell is irreversibly committed to a particular developmental fate then differentiation the process by which cells acquire specialized functions and structures then morphogenetic gradients concentration gradients of signaling molecules that establish different cell fates and morphological structures cell fate and cell lineages the fate of a cell is determined by its lineage or the sequence of cell divisions and differentiation that it undergoes during development stem cells and differentiated cells that have the ability to self renew and differentiate into different cell types so what was morphogenic gradient morphogenic gradient concentration gradients of signaling molecules that establish different cell fates and morphological structures then genomic equivalence and cytoplasmic determinants all cells in an organism have the same genetic information but different cell types arise from differential expression of genes cytoplasmic determinants are molecules that are unequally distributed during cell division and influence the fate of daughter cells then imprinting a process by which certain genes are silenced or activated depending on whether they are inherited from the mother or father mutants and transgenics in analysis of development mutations and genetic engineering techniques can be used to study the role of specific genes in development understanding this concepts is crucial in the study of development and can help elucidate the complex process involved in growth and differentiation of organisms next topic is about gametogenesis which we will be learning tomorrow